Okay, ladies, this is the final poem in our list of Lorna Goodson poems. Mother, the great stone got to move. Uh, I will be reading it first, and following that, I will um, give you something of a um, critique of some of the points. Mother the Great Stones Got to Move by Lorna Goodison. Mother, one stone is wedged across the hole in our history and sealed with blood wax. In this hole is our side of the story, exact figures, head counts, burial artifacts, documents, lists, maps, showing our way up through the stars, lockets of brass containing all textures of air clippings. It is the half that has never been told. Some of us must tell it. Mother, there is the stone on the hearts of some women and men, something like oinks, cabbage and cut, which hung on the wearer's seeds, bad dreams. Speaking for the small dreamers of this earth, plagued with nightmares, yearning for healing dreams, we want that stone to move. Upon an evening like this, mother, when one year is making way for another, in a ceremony attended by a show of silver stars, mothers see the moon, milk fed, herself a nursing mother, and we think of our children and the stones upon their future, and we want these stones to move. For the year going out came in fat at first, but towards the harvest it grew lean, and many mouth corners gathered white, and another kind of poison, powdered white, was brought in to replace what was green, and death sells it with one hand, and with the other death's palms are gone, then death gets death's picture in the paper, asking, Where does all this death come from? Mother. Stones are pillows for the homeless sleep on concrete sheets. Stone flavors soap. Stone is now meat. The hard hearted giving our children stones to eat. Mother. The great stones over mankind got to move. It's been 10,000 years we've been watching them now. From various points in the universe, from the time of our birth as points of light in the eternal coiled workings of the cosmos. Roll away stone of poisoned powders come to blot out the hope of our young. Move stone of sacrificial life we breed to feel to tribalistic economic machines. From across the pathway to Mount Morning site of the Rose Quartz Fountain, brimming anise and star water, bright fragrant for our children's future. Mother, these great stones got moved. Now, the Mother with the Great Stone title is actually named for a revival hymn or a spiritual hymn that is usually sung in some revival churches and in, in some other churches as well. And it's a hymn that is usually sung in recognition of the fact that there are obstacles in people's lives and the fact that these obstacles must move that some provision must be made for these obstacles to be moved. Now notice it's very specific as to who the 
narrator is speaking to and the, the hymn in itself too is very specific as to whom the form of activity is being touted to it is the mother now if we remember in our caribbean setting many of the churches do have a matriarchal head and that is why this song came to be as it was the mother in the church was sought for advice and also for spiritual release she was sought when it came to relationships issues of childbearing issues of um, witchcraft issues related to anything that affected the congregation she was the one that was sought for advice now i want to try and see if i can at least look at two of the stanzas here and i'd prefer if we discuss the rest of them in a in our class together so let me just look at stanza one and possibly stanza two and three now in stanza one it speaks about the fact that there is a stone that is wedged across the hole in our history now if you think about the history of the caribbean people it is a history of slavery it's a history of colonialism it's a history of emancipation it's a history of rebellion and so when it speaks about that stone being wedged in the whole of our history and sealed with blood wax what we have to remember is that that journey from the African continent into the Caribbean was not a fun-filled one. Many persons died on the way in. When we did get into the Caribbean, across the Atlantic, and into the Caribbean Sea, we were then pawned off to the various masters who wished to have us on their plantations, whether it was sugar plantation, pineapple um, plantation, banana plantations, whatever it may be. Now, many persons died going through that process and even more died on the land. So there were those who died on the way over and were thrown into the sea. And then there were those who, when they came on the island to work, they also died from overwork, from diseases, etc. And then as we became more confident in ourselves, we began to rebel. And the rebellion also led to us being killed. And so we do have a history of blood. And when it speaks of blood wax, what it is speaking of is the fact that so many persons have bled, so many persons have given their lives, that the, the blood has become so thick that it's like a wax. It's like a wax. Now, notice it says that in the whole is our side of the story. One of the things that we are constantly, constantly reminded of in the Caribbean is the fact that many of the history books that were written prior to the, the 2000s maybe or late 1900s were written by white persons who were only able to tell the history of the Caribbean from their perspective or the perspective of their um, family members or their race. The history of the Caribbean as it relates to black people or those who were bought and sold to make the Caribbean what it was is a different one. And notice the poet um, alludes to it by saying that, listen, we have our side of the story. We know when they brought us here, the exact figures, how many of us came. We know the head count, how many persons got here, the burial artifacts because many died. Yes. The documents, the lists, the maps showing our way up through the stars. So we have our part of the story that others are not telling. And then she ends up by saying that there are lockets of brass containing all textures of hair clippings. Now it is interesting to note that that is there because a lot of persons tend to believe that black people only have nappy hair. That is the history from the point of view of the white person. We as black people know that we have different hair textures coming from the continent. Even there, the different tribes have different hair textures. Some had nappy hair, some had curly hair, some had straight hair. All right. Uh, one of the things that is important to note too is that 
as we came into the Caribbean and we began, began mixing in terms of relationship, whether it was through rape or through love, many of us ended up with different types of hair too. So our great great grandfathers may have had different hair texture than we have now, right? And she's mentioning this too to, to for us to recognize that we too are a people who are out of many one who have been through many things and we are different and 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 our story is not all oh, these black nappy head people who came to work on a plantation and were bad and so they had to be um disciplined etc no that's not our story and so she ends by saying it is the half that has never been told some of us must tell it now notice again she is invoking her right as the poet or the right as the narrator to tell stories that are not being told, which is what she has been doing in many of these poems that she has written. That voice, she becomes the voice of those who are voiceless to tell the story of those who are here. Now, note two, I want you to look at the second stanza, and I'm going to stop there and we will continue the rest of it in our class. Mother, there is a stone on the hearts of some women and men, something like an oinks. Cabochon cut. So now she's going into relationships. What is on the hearts of these men? What obstacle lays on the hearts of these men and women? All right? And she says that it is something like an oinx. Now an oinx is a bit of stone that has a range of colors right um, and so it is not really one of those stones that um, is considered to be very precious but what it does have is that it's suggested that the oint has healing properties right so then it's speaking to the fact that these women and men may have been hurt and they wear these um, stones, the literal stones, oinks around the neck because it is supposed to represent some form of healing to them, right? Um, in fact, it is believed to be able to cause many people to be rid of phobias etc now it says and it hangs on the wearer's seeds bad dreams all right so it hangs on their bad dreams all right and here again she's saying we are yearning for healing dreams we want that stone to move we want that obstacle to move we want to be able to be rid of our nightmares to be rid of our fears and to be able to embrace the goodness of the land the goodness of relationships mother that stone has got to move well i'm going to end right here now and we will pick up in our next class please listen and if you have any additions to make please do so and so that we can do it in our class next